I'm impatient for change, right? Yeah. I'm always <laughs> impatient, right? I, I, what am I, 48 years old, right? So I keep saying to my family, I got 52 years left. Like, let's go, right? I say this to my students too, let's go, right? Let's change the system. I thought COVID would. I thought mm. that pause might, might right. do a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Right now, it almost seems like we're in recovery from the pause instead of really taking that pause, right, and and turning it into something that is right. more of a rebuilding, right? Mm-hmm. Which I, which I wished I kind of I kind of thought I was like, oh, these two weeks, right? Those two weeks in March, right? You're like, okay, everything's gonna shift and change, and I think a little bit did, right? I think a yeah. little bit did. We're thinking more about kids' self-care and mental health, and and those things are all wonderful, right? Social emotional learning is a real thing now. I've been talking about it for twenty years. It's happening, <laughs> um, right? Like intrinsic motivation is being talked about. That's amazing. I selfishly wish change happened faster, yeah, but I know it doesn't, right? I think what you're talking about is Michael Hines, a superintendent in Long Island mm. who works, who worked really closely with Sir Ken Robinson, mm. really when he talks, he talks about that. He shows a picture Mm. of a classroom in the 1940s. He shows a picture of a classroom in the 1960s, 2010, you know, in 2024. And it looks very similar. And I know he is a superintendent that is actively working for change. Right. And Mm -hmm. I, I so honor that about him because he, he realizes it, he cares for his teachers. He knows that's where the human factor comes in and he goes down the line. Right. And so there are people doing it. I think I'm mm-hmm. just one of the more impatient ones. And I, <laughs> yeah. I really have to think about the the slow nature of change and maybe be more patient both with myself and, and also right, right. with others. Well, that, I think that's also important to note is that w- one of the challenges of the level of change that we're, that's needed mm-hmm. is to realize, kind of have a concept of where are we at and what's next, rather than purely talking about the end, the end yes. goal, because yeah. that's great. That's a good ideal. That's that's important to know where that is. But we also need to realize, you know, like like when when a runner is on the you know the the third lap of four, you know, it's like they have to, you know, realize like I can't start the sprint yet. <laughs> You know, I have to have to maintain this pace a little longer and then then have that kick at the end. But you have to recognize what counts as the end. You know, what 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 is the end? At what point do you. You know, you you got to you got to have a strategic way of looking at where am I at in the process so that I know when when it's time to sprint and when it's time to, you know, just pace. And, and and so that's that's you know I, I think an important part of it too. That's really, yeah, that's really beautiful to think about and really important for us all to think about. Yeah. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible? is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.